Welcome to the Interlogix True Portal 1.72 Installation Configuration and Operation E-Learning Technical Training. This course is designed to familiarize the student with the True Portal System Topology, Feature Set, Installation, Configuration, and Operation. The main objectives of this course are to successfully install the True Portal system. Configure the True Portal devices. Configure the system parameters. Create cardholders and badges. Monitor the health and events generated by the True Portal system. This topic will describe the features of the True Portal 1.72 system. The True Portal controller is a Linux appliance based IP access control system. Ideal for small to medium sized commercial buildings. Used for Access control and video. It features an easy-to-use, modern graphic browser-based user interface accessed through a controller-hosted website. Eliminates the need for additional server or client software installation. Supported browsers include Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. A companion iPad app enables users to remotely monitor system activity and to perform basic administration. Easy-to-use mobile apps for both iPhone and Android phones allow the most common 20 security tasks. The apps are available on Apple App Store and on Google Play. Access control features capacities. Cardholders and badges. 10,000. Up to 5 badges per cardholder. 8 active badge formats. Card formats up to 200 bits total with a 128 bits credential ID. Up to 64 access levels. Up to 8 access levels per credential. Up to 64 schedules. Up to 255 holidays with recurring holiday support. Supports the use of anti-passback. And input and output monitoring and control. Hardware capacity supported by True Portal. Four controller readers on two portals or doors. IP-based door controller with two readers on one portals or doors. 64 total readers, 64 portals or doors, with dependencies existing as explained later in this course. 128 auxiliary inputs, plus 4 inputs on the system controller. 64 auxiliary outputs, plus 2 outputs on system controller. A maximum of 65,000 event capacity. Supports video integration with up to four digital video recorders, and 64 cameras. Video events linkage between the hardware and the cameras. Panel and device discovery within the application. True Portal supports a maximum of 64 doors per system. The doors can be a mix of controller-based doors, IP-based doors, and other door controllers. 64 doors with 64 readers if all are configured as entry readers. 32 doors with 64 readers if all doors are configured with entry and exit readers. Or a variable amount of doors with 64 readers if configured with a combination of the two above configurations. The True Portal system allows 5 connected user interface clients simultaneously. Localization support includes English plus 5 languages with 9 total languages to choose from. And an installation and user wizard. HTTPS secure communication between the client and system controller. Supports user diagnostics. Supported the ability to configure user defined person fields. Supports an import export wizard for user data. New for True Portal 1.72 for systems upgrading from True Portal 1.0 or Go Entry 3.0. iPad, iPhone, and Android phone app enhancements. Action triggers. Email server configuration and email notifications. Schedule DB and events backups. Automatic photo image resizing and photo image deletion. Extended roll call report. Upgrade Wizard from TRU Portal 1.0 or Go Entry 3.0. Topaz Migration. Additional video recorders supported. Secure Door Option in Door Menu. Multi-Day Holiday Support. Nine language packs to choose from, five simultaneous languages installed. Request to Exit, Suppression of Door Strike Configuration. 
the ability to create a self-signing certificate. Configurable TCP IP port between the browser and the controller. FQDN, fully qualified domain name, support for SSL certificates. Controller information on login screen. Hardware and enclosure enhancements. This topic will outline the True Portal installation. The True Portal installation. The contents of the installation disk. Quick reference sheets include. Hardware sheets. User guides include. Release notes. Software user guide. An import export wizard. Wizards include. Discovery and installation. An import export wizards. And product installation prerequisites. Upgrading True Portal True Portal 1.72 Customers must use the upgrade wizard to upgrade the system controller to True Portal 1.72. This 15-minute process involves Download a firmware file from www.interlogics.com Use the upgrade wizard to back up the data. Update the firmware and core code on the system controller. Then restore the data. Refer to the True Portal 1.72 release notes for important detailed information regarding the upgrade. The True Portal 1.72 upgrade may be downloaded from the web location shown. From here, you will find the following downloadable files, firmware, and utilities. Upgrading True Portal 1.7 to 1.72 will require the use of the upgrade wizard. In future releases, the upgrades will require that only the True Portal firmware be updated within the True Portal interface. This is performed through the System Administration tab, and then use the Firmware Updates area to upgrade the controller firmware. Note that True Portal versions prior to 1.7 will also require the use of the upgrade wizard in order to upgrade to 1.72. Please note, firmware upgrades are available for both the True Portal system controller and also the True Portal IP door controller. This topic will cover the True Portal hardware. Hardware quick reference sheets are available from the True Portal utilities interface in a PDF format. True Portal is distributed in packages and add-on modules. The TP Sys 2D2R True Portal 2 door base package with readers. The kit includes 2 TPRDR100A readers. True Portal system controller installed in a UL listed enclosure with integrated 110 volt AC input 12 volt DC 4 amp output power supply with battery backup capabilities. Note that the backup battery is not included with the kit. Features include built in October 100 Ethernet. Onboard interface for two doors with a total of four readers, in and out. Two O outputs and four O inputs. Next, the TP-SYS2D True Portal 2 door base package is essentially the same as the TP-SYS2D2R, without readers. The TP-SYS-BRD True Portal base system controller board only is intended to be used as replacement board in the TP-SYS2D or TP-SYS2D2R. The TP-ADD1DIP single door interface package. The IP network based True Portal IP based one door add-on. Includes IP-based single door interface board installed in a UL listed enclosure. Interface board for one door, two readers, in and out. Pre-configured to use power over Ethernet, PoE. Enclosure is configured to use auxiliary power supply. It is ROHS and CE, UL294 certified. The TPADD1 DIPBRD single door interface. True Portal IP-based one-door interface module board only. Intended to be used as replacement board in the TPADD1 DIP package. The TPADD2D2R dual-door interface packages is RS485 SNAP bus based. True Portal 2-door add-on kit with readers. Includes TRU Portal 2-door interface module installed in a UL listed enclosure with integrated 110V AC input 12V DC 4 amp output power supply with battery backup capabilities. Battery backup not included. Includes space to mount another TPBRD. 2T100 Prox Readers Model TPRDR100A. 
Interface board for two doors for readers to more readers can be purchased for in and out functionality. ROHS, CE, UL294 certified. The TPADD2D True Portal 2 Door Add-on Kit includes TRU Portal 2 Door Interface Module installed in a UL listed enclosure with integrated 110V AC input 12V DC 4A output power supply with battery backup capabilities. Battery backup not included. Includes space to mount another TPBRD inside. Interface board for two doors for readers, in and out. ROHS, CE, UL294 certified. The TPADD4DTRU Portal 4 Door Add-on Kit includes two True Portal 2 Door Interface Module installed in a UL listed enclosure with integrated 110V AC input 12V DC 4A output power supply with battery backup capabilities. Battery backup not included. Interface boards for four doors. Eight readers for more readers can be purchased for in and out functionality. ROHS, CE. UL294 Certified TPADD2DBRD Dual Door Interface True Portal 2 Door Interface Module Board Only May be used as a replacement board or a second add-on board mounted in the, in the TP enclosure. Requires 12V DC power. Interface Board for 2 Doors for Readers, In and Out. ROHS, CE, UL294 Certified the TP IO IO Expansion Board Package The True Portal IO Expansion Add-on Package includes 1 True Portal 16 Input IO Expansion Module and 1 8 Relay Output IO Expansion Module installed in a UL listed enclosure with integrated 110V AC input 12V DC 4A output power supply with battery backup capabilities. Battery backup not included. Includes space to mount another TPBRD inside. ROHS, CE, UL294 Certified. The TP at IOBRDIO Expansion Board. True Portal IO Expansion Module Board, S, only. May be used as a replacement board or add-on board mounted in a TP enclosure. Requires 12 VDC power. IO Expansion Board has 16 inputs and 8 relay outputs on a mounting plate. ROHS, CE. UL294 Certified Readers TPRDR100A Reader with a standard 18-inch pigtail wire Supports the use of CASI Prox and HID Prox Comes with three covers in black, light gray, and charcoal Weakened output only The TPRDR100B the same as TPRDR100A Except 83-inch pigtail wire TPRDR200A Reader with a standard 18-inch pigtail wire Supports the use of MyFair ISO14443A Vicinity ISO15693 Comes with three covers in black, light gray, and charcoal covers Weakened output only The TPRDR200B Same as above TPRDR200A except with A 83-inch pigtail wire T500W and T520W and T525W Transition Multi-Technology Reader T5XX Reader with a standard 18-inch pigtail wire Supports the use of 125 kHz proximity MyFair ISO14443A Vicinity ISO15693 Comes with three covers in black, light gray and charcoal covers. Weakened output only. T500 PIV, T520 PIV, and T525 PIV Transition Multi-Technology Reader. T5XX PIV Reader with a standard 18-inch pigtail wire. Supports the use of 125 kHz proximity. PIV, I. SO14443A Comes with black cover Weakened output only TPRDRLR and USB Learn and Reader An enrollment reader connected directly to the True Portal client PC 
The Learn and Reader is a USB power device used to populate the credential ID field simply by presenting a specified RF proximity badge with a predefined card format. Format program into the device must match the card format that is in use for the system. This topic will cover the installation of the system controller and add-on devices. Board silk screening includes terminal block size, 2 slash 3 quarters, divisions for easy identification of where the terminal blocks are to be installed. System enclosure and add-on enclosure wall mounting templates included in packaging. The True Portal System Controller consists of a two-board design. The System On Module SOM, board, and the input-output board. The SOM, the smaller mounted board, contains the main CPU and memory. The event log buffer and real-time clock are stored in battery-backed memory. The I.O. board, the larger of the two boards, contains the power supply and all field wiring connections. Each reader port can accommodate a reader that utilizes Wigan Data 1 slash Data O, LED control, and buzzer control. 12 supervised inputs, excluding tamper and power monitor, are provided for door sense, reader tamper, or request to exit, RTE, and auxiliary input. Four auxiliary supervised inputs are also included. Communication Bus Specifications SNAP behaves similarly to a standard RS-485 bus. 4,000 feet slash 12 19 meters end-to-end -end length. Multi-drop device to device. Devices are identified by board serial number. Not addressed by dip switch settings. 14 volt DC power on bus, optional. End of line jumper per port on controller. V bus used for communication from the TP at ILBRD board to the TP at out BRD boards. Designed to run only inside the same enclosure. V-Bus devices are addressed and configured by board jumpers. 14 VDC power on bus, optional. 4 downstream RS-485 snap communication ports are available in the system controller. With up to 24 total devices per port. With up to 16 door controllers per port maximum. The communication bus is limited to 4,000 feet or 1,219 meters. Uses a standard four-wire bus. Contains two wires, with ground, for communications. One wire for ground, and limited downstream optional power. Requires termination at each end of the snap bus. This topic will cover the True Portal System Topology. True Portal System Architecture Overview. The True Portal controller is TCP/IP network based allowing access to web clients, video recorders, and IP single door controllers. All other add-on downstream devices are either RS-485 snap bus based. This topic will outline the True Portal installation. True Portal installation overview. Installation prerequisites require that .NET 4.5 and Bonjour Print services be installed. Wizards include the Discovery and Installation Wizard and the Import Export Wizard. Documentation included on the installation is the Software User Guide and Hardware Quick References Sheets. The installation is multiple languages. The Utilities Graphics User Interface is supported in multiple languages. Manuals and guides are also supported in multiple languages. Language localization support. A maximum of four default languages are available concurrently, and one of these four may be set as the primary system language. The languages are English, French, Spanish, and Dutch. Additional languages beyond these four are available through the installation of language packs. Currently, Portuguese is available. This requires one of the four default languages to be removed. The primary system language is configured by selecting the System Administration tab, then selecting System Settings. Click the System Options tab, then select the System Language. Language packs may be added or removed as shown.
The default system language is chosen by selecting a language from one of the installed language packs. Here is the True Portal Utilities launched from the installation disk. After selecting the appropriate language, the installation is started by clicking the Discovery and Installation Wizard button. Used mainly for hardware installers to verify the installation. Workflow of the wizard. Set language of installation. Panel Discovery. Log on. Log on to the TRU Portal controller. Optionally change password. Default credentials. User, admin. Password, demo. Network configuration. Configures TRU portal controller network communication parameters. Basic device configuration, control and status. Automatically discovers downstream devices connected to the controller. First, select the language to be used in the installation wizard. The PC running the installation wizard must be on same subnet as the true portal controllers. Panel discovery requires the IP address can be pinged and the system controller's web services available. Once the panel is discovered, the initial logon must be the admin user account with the default initial password. Demo. The admin password may optionally be changed here. Date and time. Configure the world time zone that the panel is located in. TimeSync will set the date time to match that of the client workstation work time zone that the user is currently logged into. The system controller supports either static or dynamic addressing. HTTPS secure connection to panel is selected when a certificate is obtained and installed on the controller. The certificate may be purchased or a self-signed certificate that does not require a purchase. This topic will review the use of the Import-Export Wizard. The Import-Export Wizard is used to import persons and credentials data from an existing database such as HR database, in comma separated values, CSV, format. Export persons and credentials data from the true portal system in CSV format. Delete persons and credentials data from the true portal system in batch or bulk mode. Export events from the true portal system that provide an historical record of activity. This includes hardware events and user transactions. Please note, the import-export wizard is not compatible with Microsoft Windows XP. First the language is selected. Next log into the import-export wizard using an existing account. Next, select the operation to perform. Select from the five choices. Operational selection. Export events from the true portal DB which constitutes archiving events. Export persons and credentials from the true portal DB. Import persons and credentials into the true portal DB. This includes new data that is not present or updating data that already exists. Delete persons. Or delete credentials. Layouts control the data that will be used in the source or destination files, and the true portal fields that this data will be mapped to. Based on the operation selected, the layouts may vary. See the user's guide for more information on layouts. Once the layout is defined, execute the operation. This includes configuring the location of the file to be used. The results of the operation may be viewed using the View Export or View Report buttons. This topic will discuss True Portal upgrades and Topaz migration. The upgrade tool is used to upgrade the firmware on the system controller to True Portal 1.72. The upgrade utility is in an ISO format and the firmware file, NGP bin, may be downloaded from product website. It is recommended to use a burned DVD media only. Do not mount ISO image as a drive. The laptop must have network access to the system controller and be on the same subnet. To use the upgrade tool, start by launching the panel upgrade wizardix. The current firmware version will be shown. Next flash new firmware to panel by loading firmware source file ngp bin. Please note the upgrade wizard is not compatible with Microsoft Windows XP.
an upgrade is different than updating the firmware. Updates are within the same true portal version and are primarily used to correct defects. The system database may be backup up prior to the upgrade and is recommended. The path is configured to store backup. All configurations are backed up. Once completed, the firmware may then be upgraded. Panels should be set up for static addressing. Two reboots occur during the upgrade process. For existing True Portal 1.0 and Go Entry 3.0 customers, the upgrade will disable the active off output feature. This may require a rewire of the certain relays. The wizard will create a folder called backslash local documents backslash panel upgrade wizard. This includes two subfolders, backslash backups and backslash logs. Person and credential data may be migrated from Topaz. 1.4.0 or 1.72.0 to True Portal 1.72. Data and photos will be extracted to a CSV file using the Topaz Data Export tool. The Import Export tool will then be used to import the data and photos to True Portal 1.72. Please see the Topaz Migration Tool documentation for additional information. The migration tool requires additional space on the TRU portal controller for the new records to be migrated. Also be sure that a card format is defined that is compatible with the Topaz credential card data. The migration tool requires that Microsoft.NET 4.5 or later be installed on the PC. Please see the See the Topaz Migration Tool documentation section before you begin for additional information. The topic will describe the true portal configurations. Client workstation requirements include Intel Pentium 4 2.8 GHz processor with 1 GB RAM A 512 MB video card 1 GB free hard disk space 10 100 Ethernet network interface card and 1280 x 1024 screen resolution Please note if you are planning to display video via the TRU Portal user interface, refer to the expected performance metrics in the TRU Vision Navigator user manual to determine hardware needs for optimal video performance. This can be found at www.intelligix.com. Supported Internet browsers include Apple Safari version 7.0.5 Google Chrome version 37 Microsoft Internet Explorer version 9, 10, or 11. This must be used when displaying video on the events and monitoring video page. And Mozilla Firefox version 32. The True Portal web page interface allows configuration of the following items. System administration. System settings. Devices. Firmware updates. Card formats. Operator roles. Persons. Video. Email. Access management. Reader groups. Holidays. Schedules. Access levels. Action triggers. Areas. And card holders and badges. Launching the browser-based True Portal GUI. The True Portal GUI may be launched from within the installation wizard, or directly through a supported browser. The True Portal controller is accessed by the IP address that is configured for the system controller. Logging into True Portal. The Logion dialog displays the system panel information. IP address, firmware revision, serial number. The language may be selected based on what languages have been installed. The system defaults to English. You may then log into the controller using the first time default credentials. The user is the word admin. The password is the word demo. The administrator password may be reset to the default if forgotten, by using the controller clearing procedure. Contact support for the proper procedure. The default home screen includes commonly used wizard-based configurations and are accessed through buttons to get started quickly. The home screen wizards may be enabled or disabled for each user. The left menu allows access to the entire system through easy-to-use menus. We will begin with System Settings. The System Settings area access by expanding System Administration. 
The system settings include System information Date and time Network configuration Security User-defined fields And system options System information includes true portal Firmware revision Used to identify the version of the true portal system. Note the DVD version may differ from hardware firmware version. Linux kernel firmware revision. Date and time includes settings for configuring the controller's date and time. Select the time zone which is the regional location of the system controller. Note that UTC is the default setting after a firmware upgrade occurs. The date time may be set manually. The system controller may be synchronized to NTP server by either host name or IP address of NTP time server. Network configuration includes Configure network parameters Create certificate signing request Import certificate Access the Configure Network Properties dialog by clicking the Configure button. Controller must be configured to communicate on the network by DHCP or static addressing. Enter the appropriate networking information when using a static address. Network security is gained through HTTPS connection. A certificate must be requested and imported into the controller. The service port may be changed, but will default to a secure 443 connection. Secure Sockets Layer SSL is an encryption technology that protects data being transmitted between your web server and users' web browsers to prevent eavesdropping, data tampering, etc. To enable SSL in the system, create a certificate signing request also known as a CSRA. Certification request, submitted to a certificate authority, and then import the signed certificate. A. Self-signed certificate can also be installed. This block of encrypted text is generated on the server that the certificate is used on. It contains information such as the organization name, common name, that is domain name, locality, and country. Creating a self-signed certificate issued to panel IP address or FQDN will allow installing a certificate that browsers will trust. Default certificate issued to Lenel. The browser will not trust the connection because host name does not match issued to the browser. Please review the general validation rules. Contents of CSR are displayed in text box and can be copied and sent to Certificate Authority CA, when requesting a certificate. The CA will return a signed certificate which can then be imported. It is important not to generate another CSR after sending to CA. If another CSR is generated, the certificate issued by the CA based on the previous CSR will not be usable. Click Import Certificate. Browse to and select the certificate file. The system controller will reboot automatically once the certificate is imported. Security settings include A pin length of 4, 6, or 9 digits. The maximum pin attempts may be set from 1 to 8, and pin lockout time will deny access to that reader for the pre-configured period of time. Door fallback mode included a choice of no access, site code. Or all. This fallback mode is occurs if the door controller loses communication with the system controller. Input end of line terminations determines the type of input termination to be used across the entire system. IPSDC fallback mode of no access, site code, all, use local cache table is used when IPSDC add-on controllers are used. Encrypt IPSDCU communications is selected as a default to enhance data security. Credential information is stored on the system controller. If an IPSDC loses communication with the system controller, credentials scanned at a reader cannot be verified. Select Use Local Cache Table to grant access if the card matches one of the last 50 credentials used to successfully gain access, as stored in the local cache of the IPSDC.
Note the following details about IPS DC fallback mode. For the first 40-60 seconds of network connectivity loss, the IPS DC will continue to try to verify credentials via the system controller. If the system controller cannot be reached, credentials will be declined until IPS DC fallback mode starts. If credentials are changed or deleted, all data cached on IPS DCs is cleared. Set SSH password for service account is enabled on the panel by default from the factory and is intended to be used by tech support personnel, not by the true portal system user. The controller ships with a default password that the user can change and provide to tech support only if when needed. An option is provided to disable SSH completely, but it is not recommended because if we cannot bring up the web app to re-enable it, there is no way for tech support to service the panel and it would need to be replaced or require on-site service. Ten total fields are available in the Access Management slash Persons form. Six predefined standard fields. Four undefined custom fields. User-defined fields may be disabled or enabled, named, configured as a required field, protected by applying asterisks. Protected field data may be displayed if the protected user field's permission in user roles is set to allow access to the data. The fields may be reordered. System Options configures the system language and is used to control which language is used when the system controller sends email. This is independent of the language selected when logging into the system. True Portal Device Configuration Devices include advanced configuration for the following components. System controller. IP-based single door controller. Dual door controller. Alarm input and output panel. And digital video recorders including. TrueVision analog recorders. TrueVision IP recorders. Port forwarding. True Portal 1.72 allows multiple recorders to be accessed from the one LAN. However each recorder must be configured for unique ports. Please review the recommended port scheme as shown. Support has been added for universal accessibility allowing video recorders to be accessed from different networks. Also, Dynamic Domain Name System DDNS, provides the capability to map domain names to IP addresses. And lastly, port forwarding allows multiple recorders to be accessed from a public network. This is accomplished by mapping an external Internet port number to a device port number on the local area network, LAN. After a recorder's address and port are configured for the local network, you may add remote network addresses. Configuring the local network is mandatory. Select the video device for configuring the remote network. Click the Addresses tab. Next to the local network that has been configured, click Plus to add a remote network. For each of the fields, enter the DVR hostname IP address. This is the address where the recorder will be accessed from a remote network. If the recorder is to use the panel address, select the same as panel address checkbox instead. Enter the video port. Enter the panel hostname IP address. This is the address where the TRU portal panel will be accessed from a remote network. If an address is not being specified, Select the Any Other checkbox instead. Repeat this step to set up additional networks. Click Accept Changes. DDNS is a service that can be used to map user-friendly domain names to IP addresses. Set up a user account with a service provider of your choice to register a host name. Using a router that supports DDNS functionality. Enter the details of the account set up with the service provider using the configuration utility. Refer to the router manufacturer documentation. Use static IP addresses for TRU portal panels and recorders connected to the LAN router port. Set up port forwarding. In the router configuration utility, register the DDNS URL. Setup of port forwarding is covered in the True Portal Software User's Guide under Universal Accessibility. The steps are. Each recorder is configured for unique ports. The firewall or broadband router port forwarding setting will control which recorder IP address will be accessed based on port. 
Dynamic Domain Name System DDNS, provides the capability to map domain names to IP addresses. Using the True Portal interface, navigate to the System Administration tab, then choose Devices. You will need to configure the following. A static one IP address to be used as the IP address of each recorder. If it is not a static one IP address, use the external name of the site. It is assumed that there is a dynamic DNS update mechanism in place outside of True Portal. Note that most modern broadband routers have a built-in mechanism by which the DNS entry can automatically be updated every time the IP address changes. For each recorder configured in the device tree, be sure to use the correct port number. If the customer site has a static one IP address, use it as the IP address of each recorder. If the customer site does not have a static one IP address, use the external name of the site. It is assumed that there is a dynamic DNS update mechanism in place outside of TRU portal. Most modern broadband routers have a built-in mechanism by which the DNS entry can be updated every time the IP address changes. For each recorder configured in the device tree, be sure to use the correct port number, for example 8001 versus 8002. Devices may be added or removed manually, or the network may be rescanned for any new controllers or downstream devices. A hardware hierarchy is created as devices are discovered or manually added such as System Controller Doors Onboard Reader Inputs Outputs Onboard Door Controller Doors Reader Inputs Outputs I.O. Expander Inputs Outputs Video Devices DVR and Cameras A true portal system may consist of a controller, add-on devices, and video devices. The names of all devices may be changed from default. Replacing hardware requires deleting and relearning the hardware. True portal supports five end-of-line resistor types. 1K resistors, single or dual resistor, and 4.7K, 4K7 resistors, single or dual resistor. Inputs are configured residing on the system controller and may be enabled, named, and type configured. Input type is configured for each input, as normally open or normally closed, and supervised or unsupervised. Unlock all doors if the alarm input is coming from an alarm or emergency system. Outputs are configured on the system controller and may be enabled and named. The True Portal firmware may be updated for the system controller and IP single door controller. Visit our website to download the latest firmware revision. Please note, be sure to export any historical events residing on the system controller that are needed prior to updating the firmware. Door Controllers Door controllers consist of either doors on the system controller, or remote door controllers on the snack bus or network. The serial number will be required to configure remote door controller. This can be found on a sticker on the door controller board. The number of doors can then be configured based on the type of door controller. Controller slash 2D for our base door configuration includes configuration of the normal extended grant access time, held extended held time, strike mode of lock on close or timed unlock, access mode entry only reader or entry and exit readers, enable request to exit and do not activate strike or request to exit. Controller slash 2D for our base door configuration includes the ability enable alarms such as Door held open. Door forced open. End tamper. The system controller onboard doors and TPA DD2D for our doors includes special purpose inputs and outputs. Reader tamper which can be configured for NO or NC, unsupervised supervised. O input, special purpose functionality, which can be configured for. None or disabled, extended request to exit, magnetic lock bond sensor input. O relay slash on time, special purpose functionality, which can be configured as none or disabled, door hold and forced, door opener for motorized door openers. 
controller slash 2D for our base door configuration includes the ability to configure reader tamper O input O relay O relay on time determines how long the relay remains activated once triggered controller slash 2D for our base door configuration contact supervision for door position switch request to exit auxiliary input reader tamper input Please note that there is no support on the IPSDC base door configuration for tamper input, auxiliary input, or output. Reader settings are made from the reader configuration. A door may be configured for an entry reader only, or both an entry and an exit reader. Settings include access method, credential only, credential and PIN, link camera. Please note. True Portal does not support credential or PIN, nor does it support PIN-only access methods. I.O. Expanders, Alarm Inputs, and Alarm Outputs are made from I.O. Expander Controller. General Expander Controller Configuration. Input Configuration. Output Configuration. General Configuration. Serial Number of I.O. Expander Controller. Tamper Alarm Enabled. The I.O. Expander controller supports 16 inputs. The configuration includes Enable the input Name the input Supervision type Unlock all doors on activation of input The I.O. Expander controller supports 8 outputs. The configuration includes Enable the output Name output Card formats are used to decode the data presented from the credential to the system from the access control reader. Multiple card formats with the same data length may exist, only if they are configured with different facility codes. Two types of card formats may be utilized on the system. Custom formats. Predefined formats. Configuration of a custom card format includes Format name. Format type, custom or predefined. The bit length range is 20 to 200 bits and includes definition of data fields bit position is zero based. Card number bit length and starting bit. Facility code bit length and starting bit. Issue code bit length and starting bit. Parity, even and or odd. Start offset. Length. Check bit offset. When configuring predefined card formats, Name the format. Select the format type, as shown in list. Enter a card facility code. At this point all card format configuration parameters are set. Raw card data will appear in the access event, if a bad card format is encountered. Note, that this occurs only on the system controller onboard readers, and IP door controller readers. Elevator control. True Portal 1.72 has added support for two elevator solutions. The first solution is I.O. Elevator Control, using an I.O. controller for up to eight elevators, with a maximum of 64 floors total to be shared across all elevators. This type of elevator control is the configuration of I.O. controllers, using inputs and outputs to represent floors of the building. The second solution is integration to the Otis Compass V2 elevator control system. A key feature of the OTA system is the ability to restrict or allow a cardholder's access to specific floors when using an OTA's elevator terminal. In addition, the OTA system will direct cardholders on a display on the terminal to the elevator bank and cab that will take them to their desired floor in the most efficient manner. Floor groups, access levels, and schedules are created and then assigned to cardholders credentials. Depending on the definition of floor groups, access levels, and schedules, cardholders can be granted or denied access to specific floors. We will begin with relay input based I.O. elevator support. An appropriate number of I.O. elevator controllers will need to be added to the system controller. This will be based on the number of elevators and the number of floors to be supported for each elevator. Remember the system supports a maximum of 8 elevators and a maximum of 64 floors across all elevators. Next we will assign particular outputs, 
and optionally inputs if floor tracking is to be used. The use of floor tracking will report as part of the event what floor was accessed by a particular credential. Note that I.O. controller outputs and inputs not configured for elevators may be configured as standard outputs and inputs on the system. To configure I.O. elevator control, the following must be configured. I.O. controllers to be used to control the elevator hardware with or without floor tracking. Next, associate the I.O. controller to associated door and reader. Next, configure floors, and optionally create a floor groups. And then add floors, or floor groups to the proper access levels. Next, select Add I.O. Elevator Controller from System Administration tab, then Devices, then Elevators. Select Add and choose I.O. Elevator Control. Configure the following properties. Associated door will determine which of the true portal readers will be used in the elevator cab. The mode control will determine if floor tracking is used. This is done by connecting the I.O. Elevator Controller inputs to the elevator floor selection buttons and associated hardware provided by the elevator control company. If floor tracking is not used, only an access grant will be reported in the event with no floor reported. Floor illumination time determines will determine how long of a time period will be allowed for the cardholder to may make a floor selection after a valid access. Link camera allows a TRU portal configured camera to be associated with this elevator reader. This would typically be used for in-cab surveillance with a true portal camera. Next select the Configure Floors tab. Adding floors allows configuration of the starting floor, the number of floors to be added, and either front or rear elevator cab door, if two doors are present in the elevator cab. The I.O. elevator controller floors are assigned for each floor to be under access control. The floor may be named descriptively, and optionally, if floor tracking is enabled, the inputs are assigned to each floor. The second elevator solution is the Otis Compass V2 integration. The true portal integration to the Otis Compass V2 system relies on network-based communication. This integration will be handled by a joint collaboration between the True Portal Installer and Otis Elevator Technical Installers. True Portal 1.72 allows network connection to either the Otis Compass V2 DER Destination Entry Redirector or the DES Destination Entry Server Units. Shown here is the Otis Compass V2 system topology. The scope of this class is familiarize the student only with the high-level components of the Otis Compass V2 system. The Otis Compass V2 may include a single DES or multiple DES units that communicate through a common DER. The DEC is a user terminal that resides at the entrance to access to a particular elevator or a bank of elevators. Here is a couple examples of typical Compass terminals or DECs. Networking. The Otis Compass V2 system requires that true portal communication have specific network parameters. ETH1, the second port on the system controller must be used to provide communication to the Otis Compass system, as it will automatically be set to 192.168.50.250 when the Otis elevator is defined in true portal. The IP address for the network will be class C using a mask of 255.255.255.0. On the Otis system, the Otis router or gateway will be 192.168.50.254. This IP address must not be used by the True Portal system controller on ETH0. To configure Otis Compass V2 elevator control, the following must be configured. Otis Compass V2 Controller, configure a deck or DER, configure floors and optionally create a floor group, then add floors or floor groups to the proper access levels. To configure the Otis Compass V2 Controller, from the System Administration, select Devices, then Elevators. Then add an I.O. Elevator Controller. No additional configuration parameters are required when adding the Otis Compass Controller. Next either a DER, 
or a DES are then added to the Otis Compass controller. The following properties will need to be configured for either the DER or DES. The third octet of the DER DES IP address, optionally enable, allowed floors. This configuration assigns an access level containing floors or floor groups to allow free access to specific floors during specific times, without the need to use a badge for these floors. Sometime referred to as day mode. Add floors, similar to the I.O. controller solution. Multiple floors may be added to the floor group. Either individual floors, or floor groups may be assigned to the access level, which is then assigned to a badge. Operator roles determine the level of access the operator has to the system settings. Permissions include no access, view house, modify, and execute. Note, the administrator role has all permissions and cannot be modified. Operator roles features are sorted alphabetically. The permissions may be configured for each feature. None. View only. Modification. Execute. Persons added to True Portal serve two functions. A cardholder that possesses a credential. An operator that may log into the system. Person details include the ability to enter data into the available 10 person fields. Up to six predefined standard fields. Up to four undefined custom fields. And add a photo image for the person. An image may be uploaded and associated with the person by click the image area. Supports most common image file formats. Image size must be less than 10 kilobytes. The system has an image size limitation of 10 kilobytes. Images larger than 10 kilobytes but less than 200 kilobytes will be resized to 10 kilobytes. Images larger than 200 kilobytes will not be allowed in GUI. Images will be saved as a JPG. An image may also be deleted once an image has been uploaded. Adding a person and creating a user account consists of Enabling the user account, can log on. Set a username. Set a password. Choose the appropriate role which controls permissions. One person may have a maximum of five credentials. A credential is what can be used to identify a person accessing a reader. Examples are cards, key fobs, tags, hangers. One credential may have a maximum eight access levels. An access level may be a combination of 1. Reader group and a schedule. 2. Reader and a schedule. Reader groups allow readers to be clustered together based on geography such as building, floor, etc. The reader groups may then be assigned to access levels. A holiday group allows up to 255 holidays. A single holiday may span up to 366 days duration. Holiday groups are collections of holidays that are then assigned to schedules. Holidays override a normal schedule activation on a holiday. Holidays added to group are configured as a single one-time holiday. A single holiday may span multiple days with a maximum of 366 days. A recurring holiday is updated to the following year once the holiday occurs. Or a custom holiday. The configuration includes when the holiday occurs in the month. First, last. Second, second from last. Third, third from last. Fourth, fourth from last. What day of the week the holiday occurs. What month the holiday occurs. Schedules are used to control the following. When badge access to readers may be allowed. Door modes. Action triggers. Schedules contain intervals and holiday groups. The system allows up to 64 schedules. The interval within the schedule controls the days of the week and the time range that the schedule will be active. Up to six intervals are supported per schedule. Selecting a holiday group as part of the schedule allows the schedule to activate on any holiday defined in the group. 
Note that as holidays are created they become an exception to all schedules unless they are enabled on each schedule. Access levels are assigned to badges. They control access to the door based on reader, time of day, day of week, and how holidays will affect the schedule. Up to 64 access levels supported. Readers may be assigned to the access level individually, and or by reader groups. Individual readers that are part of a reader group selected in the access level, will be ghosted and may not be selected. Action triggers define that when a trigger condition becomes either true or false, a predefined set of actions are executed. Triggers are evaluated when the system starts up. Each record when configured and saved. A reference entity is deleted or modified. When a trigger evaluation result changes state. Actions occur when triggers are executed. Activation actions, true. Deactivation actions, false. Triggers consist of complex logic, two-level operators, any can occur, or all must occur, and a maximum of up to 10 conditions may be configured. Qualifiers, a specific entity such as an input, a door, area, etc. or may be configured as, is or, is not in a specific condition. Condition, 53 available conditions. The system supports up to 32 trigger records. An event is generated whenever a trigger is executed informing the operator the action took place. Actions consist of activation and deactivation actions. The system supports up to 10 total actions per record. Actions and schedules have same priority in the system when executing. Qualifiers. Specific entity or all entities. Actions. 39 available actions on area, door reader, email, input output, module, schedule, system. Action triggers may be created based on a specific credential being used, and the following actions can be set for various access granted and access denied events. To configure action trigger for a credential, choose credential as the trigger and then choose the specific credential ID from the drop-down list. Then choose the type of credential event that will be used as the trigger for that particular credential ID. Configuration of triggers are optional. Actions may be executed manually. Configuration of actions are optional. Log event only based on complex condition trigger. Output pulse durations are selected from a predefined list. 1 second to 1 day. Accuracy tolerance increases as pulse duration increases. Email notification action. Processed FIFO when multiple actions occur. Email text may be customized. Included on first line of email body. Retry limit controls delivery expiration relative to time the action was triggered. Email notification events are generated. Email successfully sent. Email sent failed, all attempts failed. Email sent expired, retry timed out prior to any delivery attempt. Email sent disabled, email notification is globally disabled. Operator can manually execute the activation deactivation action based on a separate user permission. Does not impact the real-time future evaluation of the triggers. May be used to create action macros. Events are generated when manually executing detailing the person carrying out the operation. Mustering. Next we will cover. Mustering permissions, area configuration to configure include person and mustering reader, and review icons in title bar. Launch mustering, and mustering reports. Mustering, in true portal, is used to gather people together in a specified area, s if and when an emergency occurs. Muster mode utilizes readers configured as muster readers, that are to be used in the event of an incident, to confirm the person's whereabouts. Persons in the facility are mustered, based on the system tracking the use of their credentials. Their location is tracked, prior to the mustering event by the location of where their credentials were last used. Users will use credentials to check in at specified muster readers, 
to confirm their safety and to determine they are out of harm's way. Once a person has done so, they are then moved to the safe location in the system. Note, in cases where a person has multiple credentials assigned, and any of the credentials are used on a muster reader, then the person would be reported as safe during the mustering event. Mustering permissions must be enabled in the configuration for the user. Mustering execution allows the user to enable or disable muster mode for the system. This is done by a user that is logged onto the system. Mustering manipulation allows for viewing the muster report, manually changing people between unsafe and safe areas, or manually adding people to the mustering or dangerous location. Area If a specific area is to be reported for mustering when the system is in muster mode, the include persons in this area in mustering list checkbox must be selected. The include persons checkbox, if selected, will list all persons in this area when mustering is initiated. Mustering reader if this option is selected is selected on the reader configuration, when the system is in muster mode, the reader will function only as a mustering reader, not an access reader. Note that when in muster mode, the reader will be permanently unlocked. When not in muster mode, the reader will function as a normal access reader. Launching mustering. Click the Enable Mustering button in the True Portal toolbar to turn on the mustering mode for the system. When mustering is turned on, the icon becomes red. Mustering can be toggled off by clicking the same button again. Mustering reports. When mustering is enabled, a muster report can be generated reporting all persons currently safe and unsafe. Again, once a person presents their credential to the safe reader, they are moved from the unsafe to the safe location automatically. The user can toggle between the safe and unsafe list on the report. The muster report displays persons and safe on the left, and safe on the right. Disable, allows mustering to be disabled manually. Add person, allows additional cardholders to be added to the muster list. Additionally through the report, a person may manually be marked as safe, once they are accounted for. When using the disable button, this will disable mustering and return the mustering reader back to a standard access reader. Areas are assigned to readers and used to enforce APB, anti-passback. Assist and prevent tailgating. Areas are first configured by naming the area. Anti-passback auto reset. Never reset. Timed. 10 minutes dash 12 hours. The areas will be assigned to readers and reader assignments. To area. From area. Anti-passback mode. None. Soft. Hard. Area assignment will list all readers. Areas and area mode assigned to each reader. Example of using different forms of anti-passback and area nesting. Outside office area security door. Video devices may be added to the TRU portal system and are linked to access hardware. Currently Interlogix TRU Vision recorders are supported. Up to 64 cameras. Video events allow the user to display video associated, linked, with a particular hardware device. DVR configuration includes IP address of the DVR Video port Default 8000 Video stream bandwidth Currently non-configurable based on recorder Log on credentials of DVR Username. Password. Web browser link to access DVR interface. Camera configuration includes Physical DVR input number that camera is connected. Pre-event playback duration. The number of seconds prior to the time of the actual hardware event that video playback will begin. Link devices. A list of all devices that the camera is linked. TRU Portal does not send a trigger to the recorder to begin recording. The recorder must configure to record all relevant activity. Email Server Configuration Enable email notifications. Email Server IP address or email server name Port 25 for non-secure Requires SSL Sender email 
Name and email address. Test email server. Enable authentication. When connecting to a secure server. Authentication. User. Password. Display name of email recipient and email address may be added in the system and email lists. Database backup to SD card. The database, including both data and custom settings, may be now optionally backed up to a SD flash card installed on the True Portal system controller, instead of a file on the local computer. If the controller is unable to save files on the SD card, then the procedure to create a backup file would automatically start instead. The user would be required to select a location for the backup file to be stored on the local computer. SD card recommendations. The SD card must be 256 megabytes, 4 gigabytes, 2 to 4 gigabytes recommended. The SD card must be formatted as FAT32 or VFAT. Formatting is not supported using TrueVision and must be performed elsewhere. SD card installation. Before removing the controller clear plastic overlay, you must turn the power off. Next insert the SD card into the SD card slot. Replace the overlay, and power on the controller. Note, once the SD card is installed, it should remain in place permanently and not removed. Backup and restore is performed from system administration, then choose the Save Reset Settings page to create a restore point. The database and pictures in the custom settings of the system controller, are then saved on the system controller's SD card. TRU Portal Operation Supported browsers to access the TRU Portal web interface. Windows Internet Explorer Windows XP 32-bit Windows Internet Explorer Windows 7 32-bit or 64-bit Windows Internet Explorer Windows 8 Classic Google Chrome, Apple Safari, Mac OS X Mountain Lion or higher, Firefox, 32-64-bit Windows 7 or, Mac OS X 10.7. Persons may be added to TRU Portal. Cardholders possesses a credential. Up to 10,000 cardholders supported. Credentials may be displayed, added, or removed. Up to 10,000 credentials supported. Up to 5 credentials per person. A person or credential can be added through a link when an unknown person event is generated from an invalid credential. Credential ID of badge. Hardware identifies the person using the door by the credential ID. General. Issue code may be incremented and allows the same credential ID to be used. Useful for reissuing badges that may be lost, stolen, etc. PIN is used on keypad readers. Card and PIN used for multi-factor identification. PIN is masked for security. PIN-only mode is not supported in True Portal. General. Use extended strike held times. Used for persons requiring addition time to access the door and pass through it once access is granted. Anti-passback exempt. Disables the APB check on readers enforcing APB. Activation dates, optional. Active from prevents the credential from allowing access until the specified date. Active to prevents the credential from allowing access after the specified date. Access level assignment to badge. Up to eight access levels may be assigned to a single badge. Monitoring. TRU Portal Monitoring is used to monitor the hardware status, and control the hardware. Doors. Onboard controller. Dual door controller. Inputs output. Onboard controller. Dual door controller. IO expander. Video. Video layouts. APB reset. Diagnostics. Door monitoring. Two views are provided for doors. Event view. Schedule view. Global door commands will affect all doors on the controller. Reinstate all doors return to configured state. Lock out all doors and remain in this state until manually changed. 
unlock all doors and remain in this state until manually changed. Event View The device status is displayed. Device commands may be issued. Open door for strike time. Reinstate door to configured mode plus schedule. Lock out door and remain in this state until manually changed. Unlock door for free access and remain in this state until manually changed. Secure door places the door in normal mode minus any schedule overrides. Schedule view. A schedule may be applied to the device that will change the door mode. Unlocked. No credential required. Free access. First card. Unlock the door once the first card is granted access. Locked. Credential required. Not lockout. Input and output monitoring will display the status of the device. Search allows finding a device in the list by name. Video layouts may be added, copied, and removed. Configuration consists of Naming the layout Choosing the layout type Choosing the cameras for each camera cell Video monitoring allows the operator to directly view video by selecting a specific video layout. Anti-passback reset Allows assigning all credentials or specified credential, S, to a specific area. Neutral issues a free pass. Diagnostics provides a single point of reference for the health of the TRU portal system. The interface will display errors and warnings in the top title bar as they occur to warn the operator. Click the warning area to navigate to the diagnostics. Diagnostics screen allows the ability to download a series of panel diagnostic files from the system controller for use with troubleshooting system problems. Encrypted. System logger allows real-time diagnostics on panel. HTTPS, IP address of controller slash system history HTML. Events generated by the system are displayed and sorted by clicking on the column heading. Event filtering allows refining the search using a partial match. Wildcard characters not supported. The latest three events are displayed in GUI regardless of the form being displayed at all times. 2000 events are initially loaded at logon. Load all events from the controller. Load more events from the controller. 500 additional most recent events are loaded. Events may be exported from the system into a CSV file format. Reporting TRU Portal has several standard reports allowing the operator to view or export the data from the system. Reports may be filtered by different parameters based on the report. Example of filtering available for the Access History Report. Date Ranges. Access Type. Readers. Areas. Sorting. Audit Log Report is used to identify user-induced actions. The use of this functionality may be when true portal operator activity requires additional investigation. This functionality tracks configuration changes to the system, who made the changes, and where the changes were made. Backup Restore Backups ensure that vital system data is maintained off the system controller in the case of a disaster or controller failure. All records. Photo images. Configuration settings. Backups may be performed. Manually on demand. Automatically based on a schedule. Events may separately be backed up to a CSV file. A backup file is created on the local client when a manual backup is performed. The file enam must remain unchanged after the symbol as this information contains the validation checksum. When restoring a backup of the database, and changes made since the backup was performed will be lost. Be sure the administrator admin account passwords are known from when the backup was performed. Events are separately backed up to a CSV file. Event backups may not be restored. Backup may be Full backup of event DB Incremental backup of DB Any events that have been generated since last backup 
Network shares are external locations to where the automatic scheduled backups may be directed. Supported protocols File Transfer Protocol FTP. File Transfer Protocol Secure FTPS. Common Internet File System CIFS. Share Name Protocol and Port Host IP Address or Host Name Path FTP Credentials Username Password Database and event backups may be scheduled to a remote location. Schedule includes recurring Scheduled backups Email notifications may be sent on success and or failure Full or incremental events backups may be scheduled Network share is configured for backups. Schedules for DB and events must be 30 minutes apart if doing both. Here are the available tasks that may be scheduled. Resolved events. Person info will be resolved and stored in the DB at the time the event occurs. First, middle, last names and credential ID. Device names. Event description and date time will be translated. Controlled by logon language. System language will control system generator events. Action triggers, backups. Import exports preserve resolve data. On guard migration. The True Portal to On Guard integration provides a mechanism for decentralized True Portal platforms to interface with an On Guard system. This is accomplished by assigning On Guard cardholders to True Portal access levels. And selecting true portal events to be monitored in on guard alarm monitoring. System administration is not centralized, as cardholder credential information is passed from on guard to true portal only when a true portal access level is assigned, and true portal events are passed from true portal to on guard as they occur. Here is a typical integrated system topology diagram. Both systems are on the same shared network. Cardholders and credentials are passed when a true portal access level is assigned to them. Events generated by the true portal system are then passed to on-guard alarm monitoring. The True Portal Connect integration application provides the ability to assign true portal access to an on-guard credential. The administrator will view on-guard cardholders from a selection list. Then select a specific on-guard cardholder's badge. The administrator will then select a specific true portal panel, view access levels and their reader, or elevator floor definitions for the selection. With an on-guard cardholder, credential, true portal panel, and access level specified, the administrator may define temporary access using a start and end date. If the on-guard cardholder and credential badge does not exist on the true portal panel specified, access will be added. If it already exists, the current definition will be presented to the administration for deletion or modification. True Portal Connect integration application provides the ability to enable and disable events which will be monitored from the true portal panels. The administrator can create, import, and manage true portal panel definitions and export events from a specific true portal panel. The True Portal Connect integration application will allow an on-guard administrator to view true portal access levels for true portal panels defined in the application. The True Portal Connect integration application provides the ability to integrate and send true portal events into on-guard alarm monitoring. The administrator will view true portal events to enable the events from all configured true portal panels that will be sent from the true portal panels to on-guard alarm monitoring. True portal events will be sent from the true portal panels to on-guard alarm monitoring, and the administrator may also specify the event severity for events. Prerequisites for integration on Guard 7.2.269.0 or later must be already installed and functioning properly. The integration will not work with older versions of On Guard. The On Guard system must have the On Guard Watch License feature enabled within the Open Access Application Support section, and Open Access must be configured and enabled in On Guard. Hardware configurations. Ensure that there are no devices configured in OnGuard with the same IP addresses as the True Portal panel or devices. 
the true portal panel devices need to be online and accessible from the workstation running the integration application. Both the OnGuard and True Portal systems must have at least one common card format so that the same credential can be used for either system. OnGuard services required. The LS Message Broker, LS Web Service, LS Open Access, LS Open Access Web Proxy, and the LS True Portal Connect services. These must be installed on the OnGuard server and must be running before using True Portal Connect. A user logging into True Portal Connect must possess a valid LDAP account, such as an Active Directory account, that is linked to their cardholder record in OnGuard cardholder configuration. The True Portal Connect installation package is available from the secure site of the Lenal website. The installation package is a compressed zip file, and will need to be extracted to the local hard drive where it is to be installed. Start the installation by running the setupx with full administrator rights. Enter the following information. Open access URL or IP address, this is the open access address. It should be filled in automatically and only be changed if necessary. Open access username and password for the True Portal Connect account. Click more settings to configure the following options. True Portal Connect process internal port number which defaults to 3800. If this needs to be changed, select a port number that is not in use between 1024 and 65535. Web page timeout, minutes. This setting controls how long a user can remain logged into TRU Portal Connect, and remain idle before being automatically logged out. The default setting is 15 minutes. Using True Portal Connect. To log into the system launch an internet browser. Type the IP address in the browser address bar. Type in the username and password and select a directory, LDAP. Then click Login. To log out of the system, click Log Out from the Account menu in the top right portion of the user interface. Begin configuring True Portal Connect by selecting True Portal Panels. True Portal Panels are listed on the True Portal Panels page with the panel name, IP address and DNS name. The integration application supported up to 2,000 panels. For each panel, quick action icons are available for retrieving events and assigning access. A colored indicator denotes the status of the panel. A green indicator shows the panel being online, a red indicator shows a communication error with the panel. Note, when using this application for the first time, the list will be empty until panels are added or a CSV file containing the True Portal Panel information is imported. To add True Portal Panels, select Add from the True Portal Panels page. Enter the panel information. Panel name, IP address, DNS name, username and password. Then select Save. Once the connection is successfully validated, the True Portal Panels page displays the new panel. If a connection cannot be established, the panel will not be added. The True Portal panels may alternately be added by importing panel information from a CSV, comma separated values, file. From the True Portal panels page, click Import and browse to the location of the CSV file to be imported. Then click Import. Import options. If you want to remove any panels that are already existing in the system but not in the file, Select Delete Panels if not present in file. If you want to keep the panels that are already existing in the system but update their data where there are duplicates, select Overwrite Panels if already configured. After the file has been imported successfully, the True Portal Panels page displays the newly imported panels. Note, unlike when adding a panel, the connection is not immediately validated upon importing. If a connection cannot be established with a newly imported panel, the indicator will be read to show that there is a communication error. May want to mention where an example CSV file is located with the install of the application. Provide an example file that the user can modify. True Portal Panel's data information may also be viewed, deleted, or searches may be performed by panel name, address, and notes. Offline Event Retrieval Events are saved to a CSV file in the browser's default download folder. 
exporting panel information is saved to a CSV file in the browser's default download folder, as a backup. Note that the file may contain sensitive data and is not encrypted. True Portal Connect allows viewing on guard cardholder information. Access may be assigned to cardholders. Access may also be assigned from the True Portal panel page by selecting the panel and clicking the Assign Access icon. Searching for cardholders. In the search field, click the arrow. A drop-down appears displaying the cardholder data types that can be used to define the search. Choose the data type to be searched, last name or first name. Note that at least one type must be selected. Type in the text you want to search for. Filtered results will appear based on the characters you have started typing in the search. Press Enter. Results will be shown with the closest matches displayed at the top of the list. Assigning access to cardholder credential. Select a cardholder from the list. This will display the cardholder's profile. Select a badge from the profile and click Next. Select the True Portal panel and then select the access level or levels to be assigned. The Readers and Floors tabs appear, displaying the readers associated with the chosen panel. Selecting a reader shows the schedules and holiday groups associated with that reader. The Floors tab displays the schedules and holiday groups associated with each floor. Then click Next. Under Expiration, enter the start date and end date for the time period that the assignment is to be active. Click Assign. True Portal events may be configured to appear in OnGuard Alarm Monitoring. The Integrate Events page displays a list of event groups and the group's information. On the Integrate Events page, select an event group. The Event Details dialog then appears. The name of a True Portal event and the equivalent OnGuard event are displayed. Under Status, select Enable to have the events appear in Alarm Monitoring or select Disable to stop showing the events in Alarm Monitoring. Click Save then click OK to confirm the change. In the search field, click the arrow. A drop-down appears displaying the data types that can be searched. Choose the data type to be searched either Event Group or Status. At least one type must be selected. Type in the text you want to search for. A filtered results will appear based on the characters you have started typing. Press Enter. The results will be shown with the closest matches displayed at the top of the list. True Portal Mobile Apps The True Portal mobile applications have been extended to support the features outlined in the matrix as shown related to the supported iPhone, iPad and Android platforms. This matrix displays the features that are supported in each of the platforms. Supported mobile devices. Mobile versions of the TRU Portal user interface are available via iTunes and the Apple App Store. iPhone EO 7.1.2 and iPad EO 7.1.2 or EOS 8.0.2. A TRU Portal app is also available in the Google Play Store for Android phones that support Android 2.3 or later. Android v4.4.2 is currently supported. The mobile apps enables users to remotely monitor system activity and to perform basic administration. Companion iPad app enables users to remotely monitor system activity and to perform basic administration. Easy to use mobile app for iPhone and Android phones for the most common 20 security tasks. Favorites may be configured. Capabilities. Event monitoring. Door slash inputs slash outputs monitoring. Video playback. Reports. Execute action trigger. Settings. Help. Favorites may be configured. Capabilities. Event monitoring. Door slash inputs slash outputs monitoring. Video playback. Reports. Execute action trigger. Settings. Help. Capabilities. Manage people. Operate doors. Execute actions. View events. View video. Run reports. Capabilities. Monitoring. Doors. 
Inputs outputs. Anti passback reset. Diagnostics. View video. Execute actions. Capabilities. Access management. Persons. Access levels. Schedules. Holidays. Areas. Reader assignments. Reader groups. Capabilities. System administration. Operator roles. Devices. Card formats. Save reset settings. Schedule backup. Network share. Email configuration. In this course you have learned. The True Portal system topology, the True Portal feature set, installation of True Portal, configuration of True Portal, and the operation of the True Portal system.